Hello. Today we're going to go over uh, the, the basics of the figures of merit, which are the metrics that we can look at for an analytical method that is seeking to be able to quantitate the amount of analyte. So we're really looking here at quantitative figures of merit, uh, where say you're trying to measure the concentration of a particular species in a sample. Um, and there are a number of these figures of merit, but they uh, all can be measured in a pretty straightforward way. And so we're going to go over these today, starting uh, with precision and then working on down this list that I have here on the left, okay? So when we talk about precision, we really mean um, how reproducible the, the assay is, okay? So we're looking at reproducibility. Um, or you're also, another way of asking it is how much error is there when you try to repeat the measurement, okay? All right, so um, there are a number of ways to measure this, but it, it usually involves measuring the same sample repeatedly or a series of sample re repeatedly. Uh, so you have to measure multiple times, usually at least three times, um, but often we go for more, uh, like say 10 or even 20 times, so that we really have a lot of data here uh, in order to quantify precision. And then we can uh, report out, um, or we can calculate what we call the coefficient of variation. And this is, uh, related to the standard deviation that you may be more used to, but it does a better job at comparing the variability between samples. Okay, and so um, this is often reported as a percent, and we abbreviate it as percent CV for coefficient of variation. And the equation is simply percent CV is the standard deviation of all of the measurements that you made over their mean. And then we multiply it by 100 to get it into percent units, okay? So for example, if you measure the concentration of a sample of known concentration 10 times, um, then you would just take the standard deviation of those 10 concentrations, divide it by the mean of that concentration that you got, um, and then that's your percent CV. So what we're looking for often uh, are small, I mean, always, we're looking for small numbers and the what is considered an acceptable coefficient of variation depends on your application and on the level of precision that is required, but often we need less than 5% uh, coefficient of, of, of percent CV, okay? So um, if we can get there, then, then that is often considered acceptable and is a good sort of starting point when you're learning in analytical chemistry. All right, so that's precision and how to calculate percent CV, all right? So what if we want to quantify accuracy, meaning how close to the right answer um, a, a, your measurement is, okay? So the, the easiest way to quantify this is you would measure a known sample, okay? Meaning that we know its concentration, um, and then, um, so it has a, a known concentration, say five mg per mil or five micromolar, something like that. Okay, and then we can calculate, there's a number of different ways to calculate accuracy. Uh, one way is to calculate something called the percent recovery. And that is just defined as the measured concentration, like what you got back, divided by the known concentration or what you expected to get, okay? And so here, for example, let's say that you uh, spiked a blank solution with five micromolar of analyte and then you measure and you get 4.98 uh, uh, 
uh, micromolar, you would just divide 4.98 divided by 5.00, and you'll get something probably over 99% for percent recovery. Okay, so this is very simple. Um, there's also another way that you may have seen before to calculate accuracy, and that is called, um, sometimes referred to as percent error. And that's slightly different. That's the measured concentration minus the expected or the known. Okay, it's that difference divided by the expected, which is also the same thing as known. Okay, so um, what this will give is a small number. So for percent recovery, we off we want it to be close to a hundred. So the ideal would be a hundred percent. And it's often acceptable if it's within 5% of that or 10% of that, um, depending on the, the requirements for, for the assay at hand. Whereas percent error, you really want that to be zero, ideally. Okay. Um, and again, you know, plus or minus 5 to 10%, depending on the specifications, or maybe even plus or minus 1% if you need a very tight tolerance. Uh, like if you're doing a clinical diagnostic. Okay, so those are the two uh, ways to that we often calculate accuracy. Uh, in my courses, we focus a lot on percent recovery because that is often what is used to validate methods, say for the FDA or the Envi EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. But often introductory textbooks will start instead with this percent error measurement. So you're likely to see both. Um, the other aspect that I want to get to with figures of merit is ones that are related more to calibration curves and the, the figures of merit that, that you can get there. So if we consider a calibration curve, uh, you can remind yourself, what is that? That is when we measure the signal that we get from some assay. Let's say you're doing uv -vis and it's absorbance or you're doing fluorescence and so it's the um, amount of emitted light maybe it's electrochemistry and it's the current, but anyway, whatever the signal is versus the concentration of analyte. Okay, and so here we're usually starting with a known uh, set of a, a serial dilution of, of known samples, for example, um, and then we just measure. And in an ideal world, you would get a series of signals that are linearly related to the concentrations of analyte, okay? Now in reality, these often aren't gonna go perfectly linear all the way to the axis. Sometimes they level off, and sometimes at the top end they level off, and there's a variety of reasons for that. Um, but, but what we can do now here is, once you have data like this, we can get out a variety of more quantitative figures of merit, okay? So one of them is the uh, what we call the limit of detection, or LOD, limit of detection. And the way that we get that is we measure the zero. So here we're at zero concentration on the x-axis uh, and going up from there. And you measure and you see what intensity do you get of signal and what's the error bar. And so all these things that I've drawn ought to have error bars you know, of varying sizes. Um, and so you get what's the, the, the mean and standard deviation of the signal from, the, from the, the zero, okay? And then, um, you, so you take the, the mean signal of the blank, which is the zero, and you add three times the standard deviation of the blank, okay? And that gives you the signal at which your limit of detection occurs. And so that in the what I've drawn right here, it would be here's the mean and then up, 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 three times standard deviation. That's the signal, but don't forget to convert it back to concentration units. And now here is your limit of detection, okay? Um, and so it's the concentration corresponding to this signal, okay? Oops. Okay, so it's the concentration at the signal that we can calculate that way. All right, so that's your limit of detection and you notice how high it is on this example that I've drawn. 
um, because it had pretty big error bars on R0. So you would hope to have smaller error bars on your blank measurement so that your limit of detection is you know, much lower than what I've drawn here relative to your uh, calibration curve. All right, so that's one quantitative figure of merit we can get. Um, and here you don't even, or yeah, yeah, so that's a good one. And then another one is what we call sensitivity, which is the slope of the linear fit of the linear part of the calibration curve. So the slope we call sensitivity. And that basically tells you how much change in signal do you get for every change in the concentration of analyte. So you really want that to be steeper. Okay, if you have a higher sensitivity, a higher slope, it means you can really tell the difference between smaller concentrations of analyte. And so we would say an assay is highly sensitive. Okay, and then the last figure of merit that you can look at here is what is the linear range? And that is the range over which the assay is linear. And so here I've kind of drawn this line where it's linear. And if we come down and we look at what's the concentration range over which it's linear, that range of concentrations is the linear range. Okay, so that's a range of concentrations over which you get a linear signal relationship to the concentration of the analyte. All right, so in summary, we've learned how to calculate precision from repeated measurements of an analyte uh, in a sample. Um, we've learned how to calculate the accuracy from where you've measured the, the, the concentration that you get against, against what you know that you should get. And then we can calculate limit of detection and the sensitivity and the linear range of a quantitative method by simply looking at the calibration curve, all right? So these are not all the figures of merit that exist. There are others that aren't related to this type of quantitation, like the cost, the time that it takes to do the assay, uh, the ability to scale it up and its selectivity between different analytes. But the ones that I've shown here are the main quantitative ones that are related to just your ability to see what the concentration is in a given sample, all right? So hopefully this was a helpful review. Um, and thank you for listening.